good morning. Uh, it is so, so good to see you all here today because we woke up this morning and the tomb was still empty. Yeah. Yeah, baby. It is still empty, and there's a crowd here like there was last week. Thank you all so much for coming back. We are so glad to have you, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching us online. We just want to say thank you for coming back to worship God with us today. I have a couple of ministry ops to tell you about. You know, we tell you to read your bulletin, and you do. And you read your bulletin, and you get all that information. Now, I need to correct something that's in your bulletin. If you are part of our MOPS program, the bulletin says that you have a meeting this week. You do not. It's canceled because of all the hoopla and, and everything that's going on. No MOPS this week. Okay? So that's different. But that's a test. We'll see who reads their bulletin and who listens to ministry ops. Okay? That's, that's good. We have a new Sunday school class. It's not a Sunday school class, a small group that is starting up on April the 15th. It's on Monday nights. Jim Barney and John Suter are teaching Christianity 101. It's a, a, a six-week class in what we believe, what it is that we believe. And so it's biblically based. They will be teaching it. It'll start at 6.30 in room 119 and 121, which are down in the West End. Ladies, we're about two weeks away from our ladies' tea coming up on April the 20th at 2 o'clock. If you would like to come to the ladies' tea, it's free, but you need a ticket. The tickets are in the office. If you walk in, you'll see them right there on the counter. Make sure you get tickets. That helps us know how much food to prepare. So that's coming up as well. Oh, it's just a great, great day to worship God. And we just thank you so much for all of the love and all the support that you give to all the ministries here at Trinity. If you would like to leave an offering today, the offering boxes are outside the three main exits. If you prefer to give online, you can go to our website and give that way. But if you're a guest with us, your gift to us is being here to worship with us today. And thank you so much for joining us. You don't need to feel obligated to put anything in those offering boxes. We're glad you're here. We're glad all of you are here. So with that, I'm going to invite you all to stand to greet one another and then remain standing while our worship team gets us rocking. Good morning, church. Let us join together and praise our King this morning.
Shout out! 
praise and all the honor and all the glory this morning, God. Lord, we thank you for sending your son down to die on the cross, to be the perfect sacrifice. Lord, that his blood covered over a multitude of sins, Lord. That you would think so much of us, that you would do such a thing. So, Lord, we remember that, and we remember that we, we weren't just left. But, Lord, you came back. You rose from the dead, Lord, and you have claimed victory. So, Lord, we stand in victory this morning. Not of anything that we did on our own, Lord, but everything that you did for us. Lord, we walk out in faith this morning knowing that you are the one and only true God and you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our worship Lord we just lay before you this morning anything that we carried in with us anything that we're holding on to Lord we ask Lord that you would cover over it Thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for loving us and caring for us so deeply. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We are glad to have you this morning. I want to just take a check here. Everybody got chairs? All right. Very good. We want to welcome you this morning. My name's Jim. I am also on staff here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things that the church does, followers of Jesus do, because Jesus said we should. Now, he said we should, and then he didn't give a whole lot of detail. So, 
we do a lot of things to say, you know what, Jesus, as best we can, we want to do things faithfully to how you call us. So we're going to do communion a little bit later on today. I want to prepare you for that. Uh, you could do it with uh, white bread, wheat bread, pita bread, flat bread. You do it with a uh, hard loaf. You could do it with a soft crust. You could do it with Hawaiian bread, which is my preferred way, which is that's what we got. If, uh, if you need gluten-free, there are small cups on the front uh, altar rails here. Or if you prefer, uh, you know, a hard wafer like cardboard, if that's just the tradition you have. Uh, or if you prefer bread that's never been touched by human hands. For whatever reason, you would prefer one of these little individual cups. That's what they're up here for. When the time comes, those of you in the center are going to come to the center. Look, look, who, look to whoever is towards the center and just tap them on the shoulder and say, you go first right? Say, you go first. But those of you on the outside, you're going to go to the outside. So you guys look outside and say, no, you go first, All right? So when the time comes and then you come up, you tear off a piece of bread, you dip it into the grape juice. If you want, it is not a requirement. Nobody's going to take attendance. If you want to stay and pray, you can do that. If you just want to be in your seats, that is fine as well. And so we're going to do that together at the end of service because Jesus told his disciples to do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Uh, we're also going to do uh, baptism today. Uh, baptism, Jesus said, should be done in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. Now, you could be dunked, you could be poured, you could do it with a baby, you could do it as an adult, you can do it when you're 13, 33, or 103. We don't know exactly how, but Jesus said, do it. And so some of you come from traditions where we baptize infants, and then you get to a point where you confirm your faith. Some of you come to the place where you get dedicated as infants, and then you get baptized as adults. I'll do it either way. I'm flexible like that. Because the core of what we believe is to be as much like Jesus as possible. And so sometimes it's in our ignorance that we best get to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, help me understand how to follow you. So that's what we're doing today. We are so glad to have all of you. Just because I can, how many of you are guests here? I'm not going to make you do anything else except raise your hand, but how many of you are guests here strictly because of the eclipse? Any eclipse guests this morning? Do I have anybody here? You said, I'm here for the eclipse, and I thought, I, Mark, you could come all the time, man. Don't chip your hand out. <laughs> come on, man. All right. No, no, just eclipse guests. All right, very good. I had a $1,000 check for you, but that's, you missed it. <laughs> How many, of, no, 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 there's no second chance. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Suddenly, yeah, all sorts of people. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on today as well. I want to invite the heart shoes to come up this morning for baptism as we celebrate with them, with Nora's baptism today. If you're a family and want to get closer or any place different for uh, pictures, now's your chance to do that. It, uh, you don't have to stay all the way back there, but you're welcome. You're coming all the way up. I'm not sure I'm smart enough to turn on the microphone, Tad. Is it on? <laughs> Tad, is this, is this microphone on? Because this one is clearly on. Thank you. Very bottom, he says. Oh, yeah, I need some of my music people up front here. Hey, Ben, can you turn this microphone on for me? Right, because in a moment, I'm just going to make sure you all introduce yourselves, just so you think of your name in this 10 seconds before I ask you. See, it's harder than it looks, isn't it, man? Come on, I'm not. Oh, here's another one. Look at that. We got microphones all over the place. This is a simpler one. Thank you, Chelsea. All right. All right. We're going to start here. If you would... Uh, introduce or let them introduce themselves in whatever way you'd like to do that. Hey, uh, my name's Jacob. No, it's not on. You're killing me. I've got, I've, no, it's not your fault. Test. All right, yeah. <laughs> the whole time, I know. I... Uh, hi, everybody. My name's Jacob. My name's Lillian. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Bethany. Very good. You got your wife there. Did you say your name? I said my name. Oh, I, I didn't hear it. No, you turned it off. <laughs> Killing me, man. <laughs> Micah and Dawn. Very good. 
We uh, are here this morning for baptism, and so I have two questions for you who stand up front with us today. The questions are this, are you a believer in Jesus Christ, trusting Him for the forgiveness of all your sins, for the promise of eternal life, and to live as His disciple all the days of your life? If so, answer by saying, I am. And do you commit to raise this child that by your teaching, guidance, and example, she may come to accept Christ for herself? to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of all of her sins, for the promise of eternal life, and to live as a disciple all the days of her life? If so, answer by saying, we do. Do you, the church, as the people of God, take upon yourselves the responsibility that by your teaching, by your leading, and by your example, Nora and all of our children might come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of their sins, the promise of eternal life, and to live as his disciples all the days of their lives? If so, answer by saying, we do. Let us pray. And so, God, we thank you for this day and its blessings. And today, especially, we thank you for Nora. And so we entrust her and all of our children continually into your care, thanking you that you love them even more than we do, which is hard to imagine. So we trust now in the waters of baptism, you remind us of the covenant you make with your people, the waters of creation, the waters in which Noah and his family were saved, the waters of the Red Sea that you parted, and the waters of the Jordan River in which Christ was baptized, that now we might know the forgiveness of sins, the promise of everlasting life, and our commitment to live as your followers all the days of our life. May we know all of that in these, and we do it all in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. All right, Nora, you ready? And so on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ throughout time, it is our honor, privilege, and great responsibility to baptize. We do so in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you'd like to lay hands on her, we're going to pray together for her this morning. And so, Lord, we thank you for this gift of Nora. Pray a blessing upon her life and dedicate her to your service. And we pray for her parents and family and all those who love her. We do it all in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Amen. Round of applause is appropriate. I am always amazed what a little love and attention can do for us. Nora, we thank you for being part of our services today. I'll give her back to you. We've given them her certificate and a Bible from our oldest class, our pairs and spares, to remind them of this day and to remember the power of the Word of God. You can return back to your seats this morning. Another round of applause is appropriate. We're going to finish out a series this morning called, Were You There? in preparation for the eclipse tomorrow and in remembrance of Resurrection Sunday from last week. You can watch uh, your uh, bulletin notes or get out your Bible if you'd like to follow along with the message. We'll take a quick look at our video one more time. Good morning. 
Well, we are so glad to have you. Those of you in the house, those of you just on the other side of the camera, those of you visiting for the... No, that's nobody. <laughs> Whether you're here with friends or family, whatever uh, brings you to us today, we believe God has a purpose and a message for each of us to hear today. We're glad to have you with us. Uh, Steve mentioned all the things that are in the bulletin and the fact that MOPS is not meeting on Tuesday as a reminder. Uh, things not in the bulletin that are just going on around the community. And it's just good to know what's going on. Uh, uh, St. Pete's is having a spaghetti dinner today. Uh, they've made enough for all of the visitors who are going to be in town. So they have plenty so far. If you'd like to go to St. Pete's from 11 to 1, uh, they'd be glad to serve you spaghetti. Uh, the Star Theater has one more showing of Cinderella, which I've heard is tremendous, at 2 o'clock. Uh, the museum is open from 1 to 5. If you want to know about Neil Armstrong, who belongs in Upper Sandusky, not Wapakoneta. Take that, Wapakoneta. Every chance I get, every chance I get, right? And uh, on Friday this week, uh, there's a prayer vigil happening here at the church from 8 p.m. until 2 a.m. Now, you don't have to come for the whole thing, uh, but if you'd like to join some uh, church folks, uh, Blaine Watkins is going to be here as a special guest doing some message and sharing and then folks in prayer and worship, so 8 to 2 uh, on Friday evening if you'd like to come and join uh, for that. Uh, this morning as we get into our message, it's entitled, Were You There? We've been on it for the last seven weeks together. Uh, the song that we sang today, old hymn of the church that asks, were you there when the sun refused to shine? On tomorrow at 311, the sun will be behind the moon. The current weather forecast as I prepared my PowerPoint is mostly cloudy, but I just need that one little stretch. I just need that little spot right there to be sunny, right? So, uh, in fact, uh, most of the weather reports have said that Mexico and Texas are going to be especially cloudy, totally cloudy, which means the only chance of seeing the eclipse are in northern Maine or through a stretch of Indiana and northwest Ohio. So they're coming. They're like locusts, right? They'll be here. Get your spaghetti. Bunker down. Don't go out of your house. I don't know what's going to happen with the sun behind the moon, but I want to talk to you today about the fact the sun's out of the tomb, because that's the more important reason that we gather. The image that we've been using is not just the, the eclipse, it's the stone being rolled away, and that's a big deal. It's a big deal that, that we don't even sometimes grasp what a grand thing that is, how cosmic it can be. Here's a picture of the sun compared to the earth and the moon. We don't even grasp how big and powerful the sun is. Uh, all of that provides us all of the energy and sunlight and everything this planet has ever needed in perfect rotation that we go back and forth for the seasons and all that we need for life on this planet. And we take it most of the time for granted that the sun comes up in the morning and sets at night. Tomorrow, we're going to make a big deal out of the fact that the moon, look at the moon there, all tiny, is going to get in between us and that, but because the moon is 400 times closer, it will, for three minutes and 56 seconds, blot out the sun. That's incredible. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and if you don't have your sunglasses, I want to make sure you get them. I'm all out, by the way, 8.30, cleaned me out. So I say that more as uh, aspirational than reality, right? Go somewhere and get your glasses, because I don't want you to see, I don't want you to miss seeing the sun. Let me say that again. I don't want you to miss seeing the sun. I'm going to say that one more time and then I'm going to spell it different. I don't want you to miss seeing the sun. You see where I'm going here today? You following along? I, I don't want you to miss seeing the sun. Not the S U N, but the S O N, who blocks out all our sin. Anybody mess up this week? Anybody sin, fall short, get angry, greedy, lustful, difficult to deal with? Don't look at your neighbor. I'm just talking to you. And on the cross, 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood in between us and all that we would ever do wrong. He stood between us and sin. He stood between us and judgment. And ultimately, he stands between us and death. And so we gather early on the first day of the week to remember that we live in the forgiveness of Christ. Because we can forget that too. 
Uh, we slip into a, a sense of, of judgment and self-righteousness. We slip into a, fa- into a place of shame or, uh, or condemnation. That Christ continually invites us to live in the light of what he provides. Uh, last week we read, and I want to read for us again from Luke 23 and verse 44. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. If you thought four minutes was a long time, when Jesus was on the cross, it was for three hours. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, uh, the other gospel says, in order to make sure we understood that the presence of God from the Holy of Holies no longer had to be separated from humanity, but rather God himself was restoring his covenant relationship. God wanted to be with us in the same way that he was with Adam and Eve in the garden, and so the temple was no longer necessary. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. I told you two weeks ago, that's a prayer we all should know. It's a prayer you should have. It's a prayer that someday, I hope, with great anticipation and great love and great joy that you're able to breathe your last with. The disciples didn't know what to do. The Gospel of John tells us they go back into the upper room and they lock themselves in. A little bit later, they're in another upper room in the the book of Acts, about 120 of them. And and they're there because Jesus had said, just wait, just wait. Don't we love waiting? Nothing nothing better than waiting. (sighs) And then, on the day of Pentecost, we have the coming of the Holy Spirit. Uh, This is the great promise of followers of Jesus that we are not limited to just the historical record. It's not just history that Jesus died and rose again. It's also relationship that God, then in the person of the Holy Spirit, wants to come live in us. That our request for forgiveness of sins isn't simply a, a contract we sign. It's a relationship we make. And that God then comes to live within us and that we Remember and train ourselves and discern together. God, where are you calling us to go next? It is one thing to worship last week that the tomb was empty. It's another to be believers who say, God, I want to follow you where you're going next. Uh, In your bulletin uh, for the next two months, for April and May, we're going to tell you that our summer service times are 9 and 1030. That's June, July, and August. Our summer service times are 9 and 10.30. I'm making everybody move. I'm not canceling anybody's service. Thank you. So you'll get to decide. Do you want to go early out to Old Mission at 8? Do you want to come to traditional at 9? Do you want to come to 10.30 service? We'll do children's Sunday school at that hour. Unless we just can't fit. Currently today, we just can't fit. If I did it today, I'd be fired, right? Because we wouldn't fit. We, We can't all fit. If by June, we still can't fit, Ben... Three services, right? Absolutely, positively. Uh, We want to continue to listen and follow and say, God, what do you call us to do together? As the people of God, how do we hear not just what you say in the abstract, but day to day, the decisions we make, the the ways that we decide to live our lives? Uh, The early followers of Jesus didn't have a, a written Bible the way that we have it now. They simply had their time together, their teaching, instructing, worshiping, living together with each other. A man named Stephen is chosen to be a servant because the the church, things had gotten so busy that just the few people up front couldn't do it all. And so the, the ministry continued to multiply. Maturity in faith means you become a servant. Let me say that one again. Maturity in faith means you become a servant. And so Stephen becomes one of the first servants of the church, chosen by the disciples to help feed widows and orphans. And Stephen becomes dangerous to the culture around him. Uh, Here's here's the end of his sermon. I'm going to start back up in 51 in Acts chapter 7. Uh, Stephen says, you stiff-necked people. I'm not talking to you, by the way. I'm just reading my Bible. Don't, Don't take that personal. 
You stiff-necked people. I mean, so I can tell right now, some of you think, wait, he's talking to me, and I am not. If you feel convicted, that's Holy Spirit. I'm just reading what it says. You stiff-necked people. See, I can do it better now when you know it's not about you, right? <laughs> you stiff-necked people. Your hearts and your ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Mm. You who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it. Now Peter gives almost this same speech on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people were baptized. Stephen's giving almost the same message, a very similar sort of invitation. And the crowd then kills him. So just so you know, it is not the crowds that determine the success of your message. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me. When members of the Sanhedrin, the leadership, heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. Verse 55, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open. And the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God, standing at the right hand of God. Uh, Stephen no longer needs uh, the veil. He no longer needs the curtain. Stephen becomes one of the first to realize he can see the fullness, the glory, the perfection of what God has for us. Uh, Tomorrow, you need your glasses. Do not look at the sun tomorrow without the glasses. Go get yourself some glasses. If you don't have them, you're going to need them because now you're curious and you're going to want to have them and everybody's got them for free. And if you don't get them, it's just because you were lazy, not because somebody didn't tell you. But after the eclipse, next week we'll do a a, a recycling for all of our eclipse glasses. You can bring them all back. Next week, bring all your glasses back. You don't need them again, not for another 75 years. You don't need them. After the resurrection, people could see the glory of the sun without anything in between us. When we worship, when we baptize, when we let our loved ones go, we can see the glory of God. We can feel his presence. We no longer need, you do not need the priest to mediate between you and your Savior because of what Jesus did on the cross. And Stephen sees it all while they are killing him. Stephen didn't have Sunday school. He didn't have Beulah Beach. He didn't know what it was. He never got any of that chance. But he was part of the early church that got together every week and said, remember what Jesus did? And while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Does that sound familiar? It sound familiar? Because it's, it's the kind of prayer that they knew Jesus had prayed on the cross. Stephen prays this prayer because he knew it's the kind of prayer that Jesus prayed. Some of you aren't going to forgive somebody who leaves ruts in your yard. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're going to track down the stranger that left a beer can in your, in your alley and get them arrested and thrown in jail for trespassing. Get out of our town, strangers. I can say that because they're not here. If they were here, I would have been nicer. If they were here, I would be gracious to them. But they're not here. (laughs) Hope they go somewhere else. Go to Tiffin. (laughs) Stephen forgives people who are killing him. And the church gathered every week to remind themselves of what kind of grace they lived under. Our human nature is to hold on to stuff. And live under that resentment and anger until it eats us up. And we can show up to church as often as we want, but if we resist Holy Spirit, if we don't fully grasp the grace He offers, we miss the whole point of why we get together. And then He fell on His knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Does that sound familiar? It's because Jesus prayed on the cross. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Followers of Jesus weren't just looking to remember what Jesus did. They wanted to live it out. Uh, Believers remember and reflect the Son. 
Tomorrow, the, the moon will get in between you and the sun, and the moon will look dark. The moon will be a, a complete black circle in the middle of that amazing uh, sun that we live under. It is not the normal course for the moon. The normal course for the moon is to reflect the sun. You want the sun to come back out. If the moon stayed in front of the sun, we would all die. But praise God, the moon will move out of the way, and then the sun will be back, and that's worth rejoicing in. Followers of Jesus should not blot out who Jesus is. Look out. Let me say that again. Followers of Jesus should not block out who Jesus is. We should get out of the way of what Jesus is doing and reflect His goodness and grace. The early church lived in such a way. They then wanted to be committed to each other in their marriages, in their parenting, in their community. They wanted to be committed to the covenant that God had made with them in the way that they lived and how they dealt with their money and how they lived in the business world. They wanted to be so committed to what Jesus had taught them to do that people saw this new life and said, that's a reflection that I want to know about. And in the reflection of the Son, followers of Jesus get to invite people to know that goodness. The promise of everlasting life. That every loved one who has gone before you in faith is even more alive today than when you knew them. And that the hope of heaven is real. And the invitation to change your life remains. And every week, followers of Jesus gather together and remind ourselves. Today, we're going to remind ourselves in the bread and the juice. Now, we don't do it every week, but we could. But when we do it, we remind ourselves that we do it with the great privilege of those who knew Jesus and who continued this tradition and gave the sacrament of baptism and communion that in all that we would do, we would strive to remember him so that it would change who we are. And so from the very first days of the church, following the resurrection, they looked back at that last supper and they remembered that Jesus had taken the bread and given thanks and blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat for this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And at the end of that Passover meal, he took the cup, gave thanks, and blessed it, and gave it to them and said, take and drink from this, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Almighty God, we gather together again this morning, the first day of this week, to remind ourselves of what you have done for us so that, Holy Spirit, you might live within us and we might reflect you to the world. God, we confess our sins, all that we have done that we should not have, all that we did not do that we should have. And we thank you that in doing so, we receive the forgiveness and live a life of freedom. Pray that we might share that forgiveness with others around us and invite one another to live a deeper, richer, and more faithful commitment to you. Bless this bread and juice to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Through the work that only Holy Spirit can do, make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until you return and we all feast at your heavenly table where Almighty Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours now and forever. All this we pray and give you thanks through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, amen. I want to invite those who are serving to communion to come get the bread and the juice. They'll take their stations at the far side and here in the middle. If you're in the middle, you're going to come to the center. If you're at the outside, you're going to go to the outside. If you'd like extra or separate communion, it's at the altar rails. And uh, we'll start when they're prepared. Go ahead and grab a half a loaf and a cup. And as soon as they're in place and ready, we will invite people to take communion, starting with those of you in the front and then working our way back as you would like.
think we're good. Why don't we sing as well? We'll invite you to receive as you're ready.
Uh, if you don't know that Savior in your life, we'd love nothing better than for you to know him today. It's as simple as a prayer that says, God, I need you. I repent of my sins. I want to follow you. I've tried to explain communion for 15 years and I've never got it right. Never once. Every time. But you know what? How we do it is not the most important thing. It is why we do it. And why we do it is because we need him. Don't let the little mistakes keep you away. Don't let your self-condemnation miss the glorious resurrection of our Savior who loves you. May we be a church where we mature to servanthood over and over and over again. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and may he give you his peace from this day forward until we'll all meet again. Amen. Thanks so much. God bless. Enjoy the eclipse. Have a great week. Thank you.